if you went to someone's home for a week and they fed you both literally and spiritually, you wouldn't have to turn a hand. Wouldn't it be like family, like your sister? She's with us this morning on Carolina People. Meet her, coming up next. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the new offices of the Myrtle Beach Herald at 4806 Northgate Boulevard in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the upcoming Wholeness Holiness Retreats and we're visiting with the Acting Executive Director of Mercy Hospice and Palliative Care and the co-founder and co-director of the Wholeness Holiness Retreats, Sister Connie Fahey. Good morning. Good morning. Do you mind if I call you Sister Connie? I think I've heard that around. That's everybody calls me. That's right. So they formally Sister Connie Fahey, but most everyone calls you Sister Connie. Thank you for coming in early on a Friday morning. It's nice to be here. And the Wholeness Holiness Retreats are celebrating their first anniversary about now. You're right. We did our first one. Well, we've actually done a couple before we really went into the business of it last year. But our first one was in July of last year. Oh, great. So, so literally. we're coming on our first year anniversary. Right on it. That is wonderful. Well, of course, in a tremendous success already That's right. out of the gate. Um, well, the fascinating thing was hearing from you earlier this morning, just highlighting that as small as four, five, even up to seven folks, but a great number is that number five. Right. Uh, because of the nature of the retreat, we give very individualized care, and it's an individual kind of addressment of issues that any woman would have in her life. Any woman? Any woman. Oh, come on. Yeah. Any woman? We've had women from, I think the youngest one's been around, oh, 22 or 3, and the oldest one has been 81 or 2. I saw an 80-plus-year-old writing one of the great testimonies right. on y'all's website. Right. There's some beautiful testimonials there. Right. Yes, uh, any woman that has lived life usually has run into something that she wants to work with in her life. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we're bringing the emotional right along with the spiritual together. So, you know, if, you, if your spouse just died, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of emotional turmoil around the death of a spouse, especially if it's been for, you know, 50 years and whatnot, and then the separation. So you go through a lot of grieving and a lot of issues happen at that mm -hmm. time. But not anybody, anyway, you go to counseling, you can get bereavement care, but getting the spiritual care right along with the counseling care mm -hmm. helps a person kind of put it together, find meaning in it, and continue to grow from the experience. Right. So right. it doesn't become, so you heal. It's part, of, part of it is really healing of your emotional and spiritual self. Mm -hmm. Now do you and sister... Is it Margie? Sister Margie. The yes. co-founder and co-director of right. the Wholeness Holiness Retreats. Do you all more or less audition potential uh, retreatants so to see if they have some commonalities, or do you like them to have different spiritual needs? Most of the time, it just happens, but it's just wonderfully the way it just happens because it seems like the right people come together each time, well, that which sounds is really like divine intervention. Yes, yeah, 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 yes, yes, yeah. yes, it is. And it's, it's women who, you know, most of them we've known, although a few have come just kind of out of the blue, but most of the women we have kind of selected and said, you know, this would really be great, yeah. especially if they're seeing us for a spiritual problem or an emotional problem. Mm -hmm. Then we suggest maybe you'd like to deal with this. So rather than go for therapy for nine years, you know, we can do it in one week. Wow, sort of. listen to that. Yes, and of course yeah. being around other women who may be going through exactly. some other things exactly. that want to strengthen their both spiritual and emotional right. lives. Right, it's there's great as opportunity. much support in the women's group, in the group itself, as even with our individual direction. The uh, women themselves are very supportive of each, of each other and they form right. lifelong, they've already got many friendships going. That we Since last have. July, right. yes. Exactly. How fascinating. Well, of course, we want to get into some of the retreat locations and some of the upcoming retreats, but right. for viewers who may need to get off to work or get family out of the house, is there a good phone number for someone to call to learn about the retreats if they got to get out right now or a good website from the yes. visit? Yes, um, you can Google us at Wholeness Holiness Retreat. I think that's the easiest way to get in. Our website is www.wholenessretreats.com 
www.thebrightlightsocial.com. Okay, and great. And our phone number is 843-902-6807. Okay. And that's my personal cell number. Listen to that. Wow. Well, that's so, somebody who really wants to get some good, give folks the opportunity right. to have the uh, these wholeness, holiness retreats. That is right. wonderful. Do folks need to be persons of faith? To, uh, to be participants in the, since they're called wholeness, holiness retreats, assumably some tie-in, but maybe not. Well, w several women have come that are in deep faith crisis. Uh -huh. They can't go to church for whatever reason. There's lots of reasons why people don't go to church. Uh -huh. But these are women that really have a, a deep spirituality. And so we really are dealing with the spirituality part, not religion per se. Mm -hmm. So. Often, when you're in a crisis, when you're if, if you've gone through a divorce, or if you've gone through death, or if you've gone through, you know, your kids are giving you trouble, <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. thing. <clears throat> there's that little bit of spirituality, emotional trauma that's happening in your life. So we take it from both angles. Why? And so during the retreat, we I listen very carefully when we do our first little exercise, just to hear where people are. Many people are coming because they do want to learn how to pray. Mm. Because our churches don't always teach us how to pray. They teach us how to prayer books and they teach us how to rope pray. Mm -hmm. But they don't often teach us that there's many ways to pray. Mm -hmm. So the week is spent learning different ways and I'm always amazed at what strikes a chord with people. Right. And so there's no one way to do it. And so we simply listen and we follow the woman wherever she is. Uh, Sometimes it's a real, I mean, they're having a real kind of faith crisis. And so we just, you know, go with it. And that's part of the normal spiritual journey. And sometimes just naming it for them is very helpful. If this is normal, right. if they want it, then you move, right? It's, it's, you know, and mm -hmm. then you start talking about it. And once you start talking about it, in some ways, talking about your prayer life is almost more difficult than talking about right. any other things. Oh, I bet. <clears throat> it's very personal. Right. And people always feel like they're, uh, they, in some ways, they feel like they don't know how to do it. Right. But prayer is just totally normal. It's part mm -hmm. of our life. It's just, you can't help not pray. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you got to do is look at Scripture, and they say sp the Spirit is praying in you. And by mm -hmm. the very fact that you're alive, God is alive in you. I mean, mm. it's just a kind of amazing thing that people don't realize that God is just all over. And right. so why, I mean, don't get so uptight. Have yeah. a relationship, have fun. And we actually like to play with God, oh, which is wow. quite different than <laughs> what your church Sounds is like a treat that, uh, a retreat, uh, a setting that probably a lot more folks than just women would like to be on. This oh, is yes. this is currently you and Sister Margie really focused on women, though. Right. We right. feel like women often have not had access to this kind of care. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we feel that it's really important to deal with women. And women have issues that often men don't have. They feel pretty second class in our, in our society mm. and culture. And so we figure we'll give them first place. Listen yes. to that, first class service. I That's love right. it. I love it. Well, I'm so. sure a lot of folks think through that idea of, about how to pray, but they wanted. Uh, this is an entirely non-denominational setting. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. A non yeah. We're doing it. We're doing it in homes, in comfortable homes. I right. Would say. Yes. We've yes. had some lovely homes. Oh, that I bet you have. Absolutely. That's We've got a wonderful lineup of some of the upcoming retreats. I think August 17th through the 23rd right. in Maggie Valley in North right. Carolina. I know one that's booked in late September. They're right. in King Street, South Carolina, and then a couple more coming up in Litchfield and here in Myrtle Beach in October and November. So it's right. as simple as someone picking up the phone, dialing 843-907-6807 to right. talk to you about if they could get in, if they can, of course, if they can find a week and take an entire week off from whatever they're doing, they really need to be there and immerse themselves in. They right. can't break away uh, to do other things. No. Uh, they really need it, to be there. Right. It takes a week. Right. And it's amazing. Most people come in in fear and trepidation, you know. Mm -hmm. but after the first night they really adjust and it takes about a week to move through the cycle to the final day on Saturday and Saturday is kind of our resurrection day and everything we've worked through during during the week we kind of celebrate on Saturday so wow that's yeah, tremendous well, we want to break down a typical week but 
those aspects, of course, just a little bit about you. Are you originally from the area, Sister Connie? Well, I've been around here for 30 years, so I'm not originally from, I'm originally from Wisconsin. Okay, right. And, uh, so I, I migrated down here simply because I actually was, um, went to McLeod Hospital and set up a school in Med Tech back in 1970-something or other. Right, yes. And so I worked at McLeod for a few years, and at that time, uh, the Bishop of, South, of Charleston, South Carolina here, asked if we would do more health care in this area. I happened to be working in health care, and so uh, I said, well, why shouldn't we do a hospice? So I set up, began hospice here with Charlie Sasser in Conway. Right. So Mercy yeah. Hospice started back in 1981. 1981. Right. Okay, 1981 yeah. with Dr. Charlie Sasser. We right. had a couple years ago a guest on the show's magnificent supporter of palliative care. And right. Course of Mercy Hospice. Right. That's wonderful. Back in '81. Right. Golly, and you all celebrated your silver anniversary then just right. a couple of years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yeah, we're getting uh, old. <laughs> Mercy Hospice is going strong. I think we said earlier you're the acting executive director. Right. I'm right back now. in. I'm back in for until we find a new executive director. Good. So, but what, it's what, working fine. If someone well. hears that uh, the term nun or sister, what is the difference between a nun? And a sister, a sister. Well, kind. I'm a sister. Now, a sister is a woman who takes what we call simple vows, the vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay. Now, those vows bind you for life, but they're easier to, if you wanted some reason or other to leave, you can leave much easier. Right. Whereas the nun has what they call solemn vows. In other words, they totally intend never to separate from their congregation. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, there's very, most people kind of use the terms interchangeably. Right, but, sure. It uh, doesn't make much difference. We identify with each other. Sure, even so. though you've t those are simple vows, you're as committed, oh, exactly. uh, assumably, as anyone who's taken exactly. the solemn vows. Exactly. That's a, that's a great commitment, yeah. a tremendous commitment exactly. there. And the same thing, and your co-founder, co-director of the Wholeness Holiness Retreats, yes. tell us about her. And I see there's a couple of folks including the two of you all there's also sister trina right exactly. for some of the upcoming holiness uh, retreats uh, exactly. as well yeah. a little bit about those two okay margie she's a, also a franciscan sister now there's all kinds of franciscans there's one you know they, they say you can't tell how many franciscans there are in this world because we're of different groups but my franciscan congregation is out of st louis her franciscan congregation was founded in dubuque iowa uh -huh. But we both work here in South Carolina. Right. And so, and then Trina is a Dominican, which is another stripe, and get into all the different orders in the church. But anyway, so she's a Dominican. Trina is our artist. She's very, um, very, she's really a great artist. Right. So we also include a little art into the oh, retreat. Oh, right. We use, you know, your right brain stuff just basically to pull it all together sort of thing. I love it. And Margie's a therapist. Mm -hmm. And then I'm the spiritual director. So we're a team, and we really work very closely together. And it's all three of us have been in South Carolina for a considerable number of years. Boy, yes. And work together and have worked together for many years. So when Margie suggested, let's do it, I said, sure, why not? Let's try it. Right. So here we are. We're doing it. That is tremendous. The one-year anniversary coming up next month. Let's break down a typical retreat. Is there such thing as a typical retreat, or do... Are there differences, let's say, in one you may have held last month in May and the one coming up in August there in Maggie Valley, North Carolina? Well, there is there is a certain format, okay. but they're all different because the people are the all people different. The people are different, yeah. Right, so it depends where the people are and how we move. But basically, in the evening, on Sunday evening, we come together and we start with a very simple little process. And the idea is just to get into the who are we kind of thing. Right. So I have a little process, and it's a little prayer session that we have. Then on Monday morning, first thing that happens is we have what we call group, group therapy in mm -hmm. a sense. Well, it's a little different than any other kind of group therapy you've experienced, if you've ever experienced a group mm -hmm. therapy. Um, we use art, and it's a... It's photography. Uh, Margie's a photographer, and we have beautiful photography. Oh, right. So we use... The pictures of the art right. to kind of what is this saying to you how is this talking to you what mm -hmm. is you know what's happening in your life that you relate to in this particular picture and right. so we just kind of think about it a little bit 
-hmm. Margie and I are both listening during the session, basically, right. just where is the person and what are the issues we need to work with. Mm -hmm. And then we do individuals for each person, individual counseling, individual spiritual direction. And so they spend an hour with us during the day mm. and work on whatever the issue the person wants to work on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more spiritual than it is emotional. Sometimes it's more emotional than spiritual. Right. But Marge and I try to help them pull it together and not get, um, you know, let's not compartmentalize ourselves. And right. Just, you know, what's the meaning of this issue? How can we work with it? How can we find healing in it? Mm. I often use scripture and use women in scripture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you take the bent over woman or you take the woman with a hemorrhage or you take the woman at the well or any woman you want to take. Right. And I kind of, I listen to the story that the woman has told and I think, mm, that might be the woman she needs. Right. That woman becomes her patron saint or, oh, well, or her kind of her sponsor for the week. Right. And we kind right. of work, yeah. We kind of work with, what is that woman in Scripture saying to you? And I have all different kinds of ways to help them to learn to pray Scripture. It's sort of foreign to a lot of people to pray mm -hmm. Scripture rather mm -hmm. than just simply read it. To get right into the guts of it, you know, mm -hmm. just as I call, chew on Scripture. And mm. find out how are you like this woman. And what happens, like with the woman with the bent, the bent over woman, you know, it's usually a person who's experienced some abuse or some really heavy thing that's just knocked her down, you know, right. kind of thing. So how can you stand up straight? What's the difference when you stand up straight than when you were bent over? Right. And then, you know, and as this woman becomes, some of them name the woman. Some of them basically, uh, I have the woman write them letters so that oh, they have boy. something to take home Good that this you. woman spoke to them while right. they were in this retreat. And it's really important to take stuff home with you. Right, right. I had one woman deal with a man that was sitting on the side of the pool for 38 years. And why? Because she was just, I mean, she was really sort of blocked, you know. Right. Why is he on the side of the pool and whatnot? And she just, and I noticed she was sort of an artist herself. I said, well, why don't you make a cartoon of this scripture? Mm -hmm. Well, it was just totally amazing what she came back with because mm. she was, getting into the scripture and how it applied to her personal life and how right. she could move on. And, you know, eventually she got in the pool and she's fine, <laughs> in a sense. In a Is sort that of right? She's healed. That, uh, you know? that quickly, really. I mean, well, yeah, I think when people get really in touch with their right. deepest self, uh, healing happens. And, and sometimes it's just accepting what has happened right. and then, you know, me going through the forgiveness of it and mm -hmm. forgiving yourself for whatever situation you've been in that you mm. wish you wouldn't have been in. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. And so we with just- With all women, with everyone. Yeah, with every, sure, I mean, we sure. all, any of us that lived long enough know we got problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just life stuff, right. you know? And uh, so, yeah, and it's not for people who have mental illness. It is not. The retreats no. are not for people who have mental illness. No. Yes. So if you're under psychiatric care or some other, you know, mental health mm -hmm. um, we, mm -hmm. we don't deal with this is normal stuff that we all deal with mm -hmm. and, uh, and we've all been there and you know so many ways all of us in the little group can really sympathize with each other because mm -hmm. we've all been there I mean, right. it's not like it's you know something abnormal it's mm -hmm. really normal it's normal both life sympathy stuff. and empathy yes right. both both right. that's yeah. wonderful yeah. that's yeah. wonderful so the course of each day may change a little bit, as you said, again, depending on the, the group right. there. And you can have as few as how many. Of course, it's you and Sister Margie and Sister right. Trina. We, we've done it <clears throat> with um, three. Is, it's difficult to do with three because you like the group dynamic. Right, sure. But we can do it with three. Sure, sure. And seven is probably our limit because you, then you've got seven hours of counseling plus the group plus the right. group prayer kind of thing. So, yes. you know, how, how hard can you work? Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. So you've so, got, I mean, if folks are going to sign up, they need to call now because right. ultimately it's going to cut off. Right. Exactly. And the cost for a viewer who may be interested, who may be able to take a week off, let's say August 17th through the 23rd to go to Maggie Valley or possibly October 12th through the 19th if that's some time they could find to go down to Litchfield. You're going to be in a, and we'll talk about the environment a little bit, the homes you've talked about, 
But what's the cost for a viewer if they feel they could take that kind of time off and attend? Well, it's probably the cheapest vacation you've ever taken. I was about to say, it probably is. I'm sorry it's not open for men. Yeah, I could probably find some time. <laughs> yeah, it's $750. Seven, that reasonable. Yes. Wow. And it's, you get six counseling sessions, six spiritual direction sessions, six group sessions, plus your room and board. The meals. And the meals. And the... I always gain weight and have to go home fast. <laughs> fast or until the next one. Right, exactly. That's amazing. And these are homes that folks will donate the homes or yes. more or less enable you all the opportunity to be there. Right. Often um, there's people in this area who have donated their homes to us. Otherwise, we rent condos or we rent in that where we get a reasonable price, especially right. off-season, we get sure. a pretty reasonable rate, you know. Absolutely. In the mountains, we're getting a pretty reasonable rate. We there figure it's Maggie hurricane Valley. season, so we'll be up there in August. <laughs> Smart thinking, yes. Yeah, so. Good yeah. thinking. I think you said the one coming up in King Street is totally booked. Right. September 21st. Right. And again, I'm sure you probably have a, a, a line. I mean, people thinking about it all the time. I want right. to attend, but finding the right time in their schedule. Right. Is, uh, is very important. Well, just think of it as a vacation with God. Right. Right. I mean, basically, that's what it is. And it's treating yourself and, you know, just taking care of yourself, taking mm -hmm. that week to take care of yourself and not worry about because ev everything's done for you, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice, you know. And you can just enjoy and have fun. And I saw some that of them get a little wild. No. That's right. I saw that at the end of one of the testimonials there, Mary Beth's, where she said, laughter and no cooking or cleaning. What more could you want? That's what exactly more could you right. want? And of course, they go on. I've got to say, folks, whether they have internet access or not, they, if they don't have it, they need to go to the library, get on a computer there so they can visit wholenessretreats.com and look at some of these wonderful testimonials. I wish they're all probably pretty long. Uh, I mean, they're all too long for me to go ahead and read. Actually, all but this one. Here's one of Mary Joan. The Wholeness Holiness Retreats helped me to realize that I am God's beloved. As I unbow my own wounds, behaviors, and past hurts, I feel called to wrap my arms around others with a shawl of comfort and love. I want to radiate God's love to others so we can each see the goodness in right. one another and become our true selves. Each and every one of these testimonials has right. that same theme that they've really gotten a lot right. out of the course. Even the 80-year-old who right. writes in there about her experience, and as you said, there's even a couple potentially older than her but that experience uh, for her and how it impacted her life, having lived a very full life, right. as she open up, opens up, you know, I'm towards the end of my uh, life journey, right. and but beginning a uh, another very special journey. She's still on cloud nine. I talked to her. I just happened to talk to her this last weekend. I ran into her, and she's still on cloud nine. She really? fixed her. She took her room and took all the pictures and put them on uh, on her wall. No. So she has a little kind of little wall of prayer up there right, sort of thing. Right. So yeah, she's still enjoying her retreat. Well this folks, is... yeah, they really have to find a way to get online to see some of these very special ones. And also right. someone else, Linda here, says, I am not Catholic, so right. I didn't really know what to expect. However, I sur soon learned that my denomination really didn't really matter. Right. That this was open to everybody. Exactly. And that Sister Connie and Sister Margie, and now bringing Sister, is it Trina in? Yeah, Sister Trina. So that she can bring some art in and y'all can have that opportunity. Right. It's really special. Exactly. You mentioned a, a special thing before we started, Sister Connie, that if someone can't afford the $750, that there may be some right. scholarship opportunities yes. or some grants right. out there. Right, yes. We have a donor that is giving us money to help. So mm -hmm. we, we, and if I really no, you can't afford it. We can find money. There's, right. Don't let the money hold you up. It's not, it's not what we live on. So. Yes, yes. I mean, not that we need, don't need money. But, no, no, no. But you can find money, a way. Right, we can always find a way. 9026807. For you, Sister Connie, if you weren't doing the wholeness, holiness retreats or hadn't founded Mercy Hospice, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, I can't imagine. I have my fingers in many other things, so... Yeah. Um, this is this is for now, right. you know. I'm 72, you know. So oh, I mean, boy. you know, I'm much. I'm, <laughs> I'm with those older ladies, <laughs> and, but I'm enjoying it. But yeah, I I volunteer in the community a lot. 
That's wonderful. And uh, I'm a, happen to be an organist at a Lutheran church and a Catholic church, so I, I keep my fingers in this, that. And yes, you really do up. keep your yeah, fingers right. moving. That's wonderful. Well, thanks so, so much for being with us this morning. I'm okay. sorry we've run out of time. Enjoyed. Uh, God bless these great upcoming uh, wholeness holiness retreats. Stay tuned to a little more of Sister Connie Faye coming up next. The longer I sit here with Sister Connie, the more I know I, it's difficult to do a wrap like this because there's so many great aspects of it. Picking up one of these brochures, one of these application forms for the retreat is perfect in and of itself. One of a kind, once in a lifetime, life-changing retreat, opening minds and hearts of women. This is a real opportunity if you're 18 or older. Take the time to write down this cell number. As, we, as I was thinking earlier, how often do I have guests that give out their cell number? It highlights Sister Connie's commitment to spiritual well-being. She wants you to be a part of this. If you're 18 and older, pick up the phone, 843-902-6807, 843-902-6807, wholenessretreats.com, wholenessretreats.com. Even though during the interview I highlighted those great words from Mary Beth, where she said, no cooking or cleaning, who could pass up an opportunity like this? The real highlight of it was her testimony right there. You, I'm just giving you a, a piece of it, just a piece of it. Oh, on the surface, I had a good life. I had a strong faith, but I was just existing. I was not living. I had lost the playful, strong, confident, beautiful part of me. All of that changed in this glorious week. I felt a rebirth, an awakening. I found me again. I became free, free to choose, free to live, free to love, free to play, free to pray in my own way, in my own way. Think of that. Sisters Margie and Connie are messengers sent from God. They are strong yet gentle, supportive yet tough, fun yet serious. Don't you want to hear what else Mary Beth says? Don't you want to read it? Take the time to go online to wholenessretreats.com. Or I bet Sister Connie would read it to you if you give her a call, 843-902-6807. Sister Connie, thanks so much for being with us this morning. It's really been a treat.